Welcome to Excel and Finance video number one. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Finance in Excel, Chapter 00. Yes, this is Chapter 0, and we'll go all the way to Chapter 11 and perhaps beyond. A basic finance class, mostly covering corporate finance, but lots of cool personal finance examples also. This first chapter, uh, and there'll be six videos, just covering the basics of Excel and math. And then we'll move on to talking about uh, finance. All right, in this first video, we're going to talk about, this is just a list of topics for uh, chapter zero, six videos. Here's our first topic, just for those of us who are in this class who have never used Excel before, we've got to talk about what is Excel. Excel basically does two things, calculations, which are is actually what we're going to do uh, mostly in this class. Things like adding a column total or calculating a monthly loan payment. Or adding some numbers, finding the minimum amongst some interest rates, or even doing a subtraction, calculations. Data analysis, that's where you look at raw data, organize it in some way, and come to some conclusion. A very simple example would be, hey, here's some interest rates. right? And this is just a few, but perhaps maybe we had 20 of them. And we wanted to find the lowest one, because we want the lowest interest rate. So we'd find the min. That would involve doing a calculation. And the data analysis part means taking raw data, finding the min, and saying, hey, I'm going to choose that loan. Excel also stores raw data. We don't get to do a lot of that. In this class, we're mostly about finance and calculations. All right, what is Excel? What happens in Excel? Excel is a two-way grid. A, B, C, those are the column headers, D, E, F. Uh, row headers over here, two, three, four. The intersection of a column and a row is a cell. Now, some people think, oh, hey, no, so I know that. But that is really the heart of Excel. Because what we do often, and as we'll see every day in this class, is we make formulas based on cell references. And we'll see that in just a moment. Uh, column C, row two, this is C2. So we have columns and rows. This is a cell. Now, a range of cell, we'll see in just a moment when we do a calculation, you can have a bunch of cells together. So this would be E5 to G5. Range of cells. What about all the cells? That's called a worksheet. You could see this is a sheet tab here and has the word Excel. If you double click it, you could actually type and hit Enter, put whatever name you want there. I'm going to click Escape. Ah, but that's just one sheet. That is a worksheet. This is the sheet tab. All of the cells make up a worksheet. Now, we are going to have many worksheets in each one of our workbooks. Now, one way to get to the different sheets is by clicking. However, and you could also move this. It doesn't move the active, these little arrow uh, scroll arrows. Do not move the active sheet. You can see I still have selected that uh, second sheet there, but it moves the view of the sheets. Perhaps the best way to move through all the worksheets, since we're going to have in most of our workbooks for any one given chapter, we're going to have 10, 20, 30 worksheets. The best way is to use the keyboard shortcut Control Page Down and Up. So I'm on this sheet. I'm going to use Control Page Down to move to the next one, and then the next one, and the next one. You can see this one says Formula Elements, Page Down, Control Page Down, Math Symbols. Now I'm going to do Control Page Up, Formula Elements. I'm moving to the left now, Functions, Formula, uh, Excel. Okay, so that's kind of uh, navigating through all the sheets. All of the sheets together make the workbook. The name of this workbook or file is Finance in Excel, Chapter 00 Excel Workbook. .xlsx. That's a file extension for Excel 2007. And in this class, we're going to be using uh, 2007 or 2010. Almost all the calculations we make, uh, are, there's there's no difference. Some of the things like the file um, backstage menu I here, have here in Excel 2010 is slightly different in 2007. It actually is a round orb. All right, uh, so all of the worksheets make up the workbook, which is the file. Uh, 
now we want to look at ribbons. Now I have, I'm going to always have my ribbons, or most of the times have my ribbons not showing because I'm trying to shoot a video and conserve space. But you can right click and then unminimize or right click minimize. Now control F1 is the keyboard shortcut to toggle, but I can't use that because it will turn off my uh, video recorder. So I'm going to right click and unminimize. Ah, this is called the home ribbon. Now your home ribbon may look different. Mine, I have my uh, uh, screen here very small, so everything's uh, scrunched up and uh, to, so you can hardly see anything. The number right here, if I pull on this edge right here and drag it out, you can see that's probably what you see. You see the number group, the alignment group, the font group, the clipboard. Right? We'll be using this a lot in this class. This is number formatting. Actually, we'll probably use the keyboard shortcut to, to get to format cells. These are ribbons. The home ribbon has the most common items. If you look over here, things like insert function, which we probably will never use. We will do more efficient ways in the sheets. Sorting. So there's some things in the home ribbon we'll be using in this class, because this is a finance class where we do mostly calculating. The only, there's an insert, you know, in some of the other classes I teach like statistics, we do lots of charts, not in this class. Page layout, perhaps we'll do it when we do an amortization table. Uh, and we may use the formula ribbon also. Those are ribbons. So for example, you could, uh, uh, type the word finance. Take your cursor like um, I typed and hit enter. Notice the um, cursor jumped down and selected the cell below. But if I take my mouse and click with that white thick cursor, boop, just like that, I can do something like say change the fill color. Now if I use a dark fill color, then I have to use a light uh, font color. All right, so those are some buttons. We'll be using some of these. Um, but again, we're doing mostly calculating. So we're going to be staying in the cells, uh, you know, making formulas and typing in raw data and stuff like that. Another thing is this is called the Quick Access Toolbar, or QUAT. Now, this might be handy for this class because something like changing the decimals, we, may, we will be doing this all the time. We're going to be dealing with interest rates with, with you know, 15 decimals. And we don't want to see all the decimals. So one, here's the QUAT. There's not much on it when you open up a save, a our best friend undo and redo. By the way, undo, what does it do? When I click undo, it undoes the last action, and then redo undoes the undo. Right? So there's some items there. Now, some people like it up here, which I do because I, I like to conserve space. But you can right click and say, uh, show below the ribbon, just like that. I'm going to right click and show above because that conserves space. The other great thing is if we decrease decimals a lot, you find something you want in the ribbon, right click and say add to quick access toolbar. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Anything you you find here that you like, maybe using name manager all the time, all I got to do is right click and can add it to the quick access toolbar. Now. Um, couple more things about uh, how Excel is set up and basic scroll bars. We will be using scroll bars because some of the sheets will be big. Some of our amortization tables uh, will be huge. So when we scroll down, I'm clicking on this little scroll arrow or you can drag the scroll box. That's the vertical. This, Oops, now I was doing that off the screen the whole time. Here's the scroll arrow and the scroll box. Again, this is the horizontal. A lot of times we'll have very large sheets. Even as we go forward here, we'll have lots of stuff listed vertically. Now, I'm going to right click minimize. All right, so we looked at all of that. Formulas and functions, we have a couple videos coming up uh, specifically on that, but let's just look at um, a couple basic uh, formulas. Let's start right here. Now, in order to do a formula, our goal is to take 100 minus 85. You got to know how to tell Excel that what you're putting in the, the cell here is a formula. If we type a word, right, Excel doesn't think that's a formula. and It knows that it's a word. But if you type an equal sign as the first character in the cell, boom, you just told Excel, I'm doing a formula. Now, we want 100 minus 85. And the way you do this in Excel is you put your formula inputs in the cell. So this is in F9. This is in G9. And the formula is in H9. 
So you take your cursor and you can click on the F9 and it puts it in for you. You type a minus sign and it's better to use the number pad uh, or it's convenient to use the number pad often and then click on G9. When you hit enter it tells you your answer. Now why do we make formulas? Up here this is called the formula bar and you can see the formula. It's great because you can see the calculated answer on the surface of the spreadsheet but up here you can see your formula. This is called the name box. That's because the cell selected is H9. Now what is beautiful about Excel? Why was a spreadsheet uh, invented because formula inputs are here and you simply change them 75 and when you hit enter boom your formula updates amazingly convenient if you didn't have a spreadsheet and in fact the guys who invented it uh, Bricklin and Frankston their idea was put formula inputs into cells create a formula and you never have to retype all of your formula inputs into your calculator because if we had to redo this 100 minus 75 we'd have to type it in before spreadsheets. All right, um, this is a formula you can see up here equal sign there's a cell reference and a math operator a minus sign. Another type of formula is when you use a built-in function like adding. So adding you can come up to the home and this is called the, the sigma or the sum button but you can click your drop down and there's some functions here sum. Now we're probably n never going to use any of the ribbon ways of putting in formulas because for this finance class we're going to use the same type of functions over and over and it's faster to type them in but let's just see how this works this first time I'm going to click um, this the sum there and what did it do you put an equal remember equal sign is the first character which says I'm doing a formula sum that is the name for the built-in function and there's a cell range e5 to g5 with a colon in between that means from the bookend E5 all the way to G5 please add all those up alright I'm gonna click escape to get rid of it because in this class we will be using the sum function just like basically all other professions use the sum function more than any other function and there's a keyboard shortcut for the sum function it's alt plus equals. Now what that means is you hold the alt key and then tap equals. So alt equals. And after the uh, 11 or 12 weeks of this class um, you will just do that automatically. You will never take your mouse and come up to wherever either the home or the formula. You'll just do alt equals. Now one thing about the sum function and uh, other functions like average that we use it's guessing. Notice the dancing ants are marching around and dancing around that range. Sometimes it guesses right Sometimes it gets guesses wrong, so you always want to check it. If it's right, then simply hit enter. Another way, uh, another example of a calculation would be find the smallest or minimum. Now this is a function we'll get to use uh, a lot in this class. We're going to type an equal sign and then type MI and look at that. There's a drop down that appears and we can either select it or type N and as soon as it's highlighted in bold we can hit the tab key and then you take your cursor and click and drag. So the min is 0.012. Actually uh, whoever typed these in, I can't imagine who typed this in, typed them in incorrectly. This should actually be 0.12 which will 0.12 if you format it as a percent it would be 12% and this one should be 0.15. So we type, we made a mistake on our data entry. We uh, made our formula, but it was easy to fix. Now the min, the minimum number, the smallest number is 0 0.09. That's an example of a calculation. You can see up here equal sign function min. Uh, that's called an argument there and a cell range. That formula is a calculation. The data analysis part is taking raw data, organizing it. In this case we just took out the min and then we go ahead and select that loan as our choice. All right, um, that is just a brief uh, introduction. We're going to talk about formulas and functions and cell references and number formatting and a bunch of other things in videos coming up. Our next video we'll talk uh, more about formulas and functions. Alright, see you next video.